Good day. So today we're going to discuss about the chapter one of our lecture for the subject reading simplicity in history. So this is our PowerPoint presentation, and I will just I will discuss it to you today. So by the way, again, my name is I am your professor, Mr. Gibson Ilagan of Fabio. So reading simplicity in history. So what is history? What are the words comes first to your mind when you hear the word history? So I know these are some words, no, na na very thing or that you imagine or you think when you word when you hear the word history. I think it's narrative, past, events, chronological accounts, frontal, rec and record. So what is the real meaning of history? So, history is the study of the past and its legacies in the present in preparation for the future. So, sabi natin, uh, it is the study of the events in the past, no? Where in what we have right now, it is the product of our history. What we are enjoying uh, independence is part of our history. So, we all know that Herodotus is the father of history. And why do we need to study history? Okay, number one, in order to ensure that the Greek deeds are not forgotten. We study history so that you know what great things happened in the past. Number two, in order to understand the present and prepare for the future. We study history so that you know why things happened in the past and you can make certain that things either do or don't happen, depending on the outcome. And in order to provide a moral lesson, a model of good behavior and warning about evil, we study history so that you know what is the right things to do and so that you can understand how evil happens and can be prevented. So that is why we need to, uh, we need to study history. So reasons of studying history, some of you, I think, are thinking, you know, since elementary to secondary to tertiary level, why do we need to study history? Because we have a legal basis. Our legal basis is that Philippines, in Philippines 1987 Constitution, it is injected in Article 14, you no know, Section 2, Paragraph 3, about the education, science, and technology, arts, and culture, and sports. Uh, according to Section 3, Paragraph 2, the state shall promote patriotism and nationalism. How the Philippines, how the government can promote nationalism and patriotism? Of course, we studying and teaching Philippine history by injecting the Philippine history in different curricula from, third, from primary, secondary, to tertiary level of education. So, in order to understand, also, okay, what are the reasons behind our studying Philippine history? Number one, in order to understand the history of this nation, and to increase, of course, patriotism and sense of identity. In order to encourage civic participation and citizenship. In order to prevent prejudice. In order to appreciate arts and literature. And in order to conserve a personal growth. Okay. What are the sources of history? So actually, there are two sources of history we have. We have the primary source and the secondary source. You know? But what is the difference between these sources? So you say primary source is basically pertains to artifacts and fossils, no? When you say artifacts, those are the materials used by early civilization, yung mga natitiran nilang panga, yung mga libro na naiwan, yung mga naisulat, no? When you say uh, fossils, it pertains dun sa mga uh, remains of plants, animals, and humans. How about secondary sources? These are the newspapers, diary, books, right now. Those are the secondary sources of history. For more information, you, know, you can read your uh, module you know, about the sources of study history. So, we, uh, we have heard some Filipino researchers or historians. We have uh, Renato Goncillo. That suppose uh, he's the one supposed that our Philippine history is a, strong, uh, a story of struggle. You know? Because according to Renato Monsetino, there are a lot of struggle happening in our history. What we enjoy right now is the product of different, uh, the long story you know, before the coming of Spaniards down to the 
uh, end of American colonization. And, and uh, right after the American colonization, there are all these struggles happen, no? Uh, until, until the time of uh, President Marcus when he uh, declared the martial law. And after that, until now, we have so many uh, struggles, uh, so many uh, events, no? Happened here in the Philippines. So, according to Felipe Landa Hucano, he is one of the prominent Filipino researchers or historian, wherein he disputed that theory of migration by Henry Otley Bayers. Because when he discovered the Tabanman in Palawan, when they discovered the Tabanman in Palawan, no? he believed that there is a Philippine, that, that this Tabanman is not the product of the, what they call theory of migration. How about Theodore Agoncillo? Theodore Agoncillo is, is a Filipino historian and researcher wherein he based uh, his history, the history niya, based on the legal evidence and historical evidences. So, how about the geography of the Philippines? Okay. Minsan nag-isip tayo, paano mabaglong mo yung sumipot ang bansang Pilipinas sa ibabaw ng mundo? We are thinking na, ano ba to? Bigla na lang ba siya sumibol sa ibabaw ng mundo? Sa gitna ng constitution? Bigla na lang ba siya napunta dito? Paano ba yung nangyari? Okay? There are some theories about the origin of the Philippines. Again, these are just a theory, meaning to say, there are some facts that na, but not totally proven. So, first theory is that about the volcanic theory. Some researchers or scientists and historians believe that Philippines was as a result of the eruption of submarine volcanoes along the western side of the Pacific Basin. No? Hindi ka takataka yun because we are part of the what we call ring, Pacific Ring of Fire no? inside the Pacific Ocean. So, uh, we all know that there are lots of volcanoes under the Pacific Ocean. No? And they believe that this when the volcano erupted, no, the lava, the mga tumigas, no, it is the country or they, these are the countries na meron tayo ngayon, like Philippines, New Zealand, Japan, or lahat ng bansang pulo-pulo na nakapaligid sa Pacific Ocean. Okay, that's the theory of volcanic theory. So how about Pritikton theory? They believe that the uh, Philippines, uh, is the product of the different movements of plate no, under the Earth's crust. No? Yung, yung plate, uh, sabi nila kung bakit daw meron mga bundok, kami iba't iba tayong landfall. So, what happens sa Pilipinas? Maybe because of the plate no, na nagsalubong, kumaas, kaya nagkaroon tayo ng mga mountains, volcanoes, etc. O yung mga high, ano, high or elevated area. And meron namang pwede nagpatong lang, kaya nagkaroon ng hindi. Or pwede namang lumubog, no, pareho lumubog, kaya nagkaroon ng mga pieces. So, ay, uh, pinasok ito ng mga tubig. Kaya may iba pa tayo ng mga water forms. So, this is the theory of the economic theory. How about the continental drift theory? When we say continental drift theory, they, be, they believe that the Philippines is part of what we call the Pangea. Yung sinasabi sa ng mga scientists na the big continent year, long, long years ago. So they, sabi nila, there is a big land mass or continent on the earth before. No? Na kung saan, because of the movement of the plates also, no sa ilalim ng mga lupa or ng mga crust ng nagmumug siya so habang nagmumug siya na continente no kada taon kaya naghiwa-hiwalay siya kaya sabi ng mga scientists kaya kung makikita niyo sa mapa yung ng mundo it's like a puzzle no para daw siyang puzzle na pwedeng mong pagdikit-dikitin yung mga bansa lalo na yung mga island no para mabuo ulit yung dating uh, tinatanong ng pangiya so, the, another theory is about the lost continent theory or the Mualimuria. They believe that Philippines uh, is uh, the remains of the what we call Mualimuria, no? na nag-submerge in the Pacific Ocean na kung sa, during the time ng prehistoric era. So, these are, yung mga bansa doon na nasa paligid dito, ito daw yung mga bansa ito daw yung mga part ng pack ng, ng Mu o Limuria or yung Lost Continent na manataas na bahaki. Nung tumakas yung level ng water, ito na lang yung mga natira. Kaya we are one of the product of the Mu o Limuria. Okay? So, another theory is about the land bridges theory. They believe that Philippines is part of, one of the what we call a mainland Asia. So, Palawan is connected to Vietnam. The southern part of Mindanao is also connected to in Malaysia or southern part of Brunei or Borneo. Then we have the here the uh, northern part is also connected to directly to China, no? 
what are those um, evidences ng mga scientists or mga historians? Bakit nila paniniwala? Uh, bakit madalakas ng kutub nila na we are part, that we are part of the mainland Asia? No? Kasi when they measure the level of water of the Pacific Ocean and ng ating West Philippines or South, or South China Sea, uh, the level of water uh, ng Pacific Ocean is very deep rather than the level of water ng um, West Philippine Sea or South China Sea. So, kaya nga pa, sabi nila, mas mababaw daw itong si South China Sea kumpara kay West Philippine Sea. Kasi nga, sinasabi nila na uh, si South China Sea, South Pacific Ocean, kaya sinasabi nila na itong part na ito ng, ano, ng, ng, itong part na ito ng, ng West Philippine Sea or South China Sea na ito, no? Sinasabi nila na, may, dito daw kasi na matatagpuan yung mga land bridges na yan. No, nung natapos yung ice age dahil nga nung natunaw yung mga yung ice during after the ice age, no? Nung natunaw yung ice, tumaas yung level ng water, kaya nag sa bridge or lumubog yung mga tao natin mga land bridges. Na. Okay? What are the other evidences? When they found some um, materials or some fossils and artifacts na meron tayo uh, from here in the Philippines and also in our neighboring counties. No, specifically in our uh, Southeast Asian neighboring countries like Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia. Okay, so there are different names given to the Philippines. No, Ptolemy uh, named the Philippines as Maniolas or Pier, okay, which means land of gold. No, why? Because when they saw the Philippines or this part of the area of the Pacific Ocean, pag tumatas ng araw from the eastern part, kumiti ng kinang itong lugar na ito. No? At alam niyo ba, kahit saan kasay sa kasaysayan natin, sila sabi na, yung gold yung nakikita lamang within the river valleys natin. So ganun tayo ka-rich talaga sa gold before. No? Bago pa dumating ang mga Espanyol o bago pa dumating ang mga mananakit natin. So the old Chinese, Chinese also named the Philippines as Mai or Mai or Lato Volcano because of, there are lots of volcano, active volcano here in the Philippines. The Chinese trader uh, named the Pitias Lusa or Island here in Asia. Japanese traders uh, named the Pitias as Shinsan or Mountain of Gold. And Magellan named uh, the Island of Summer and Dente as Islas de San Lazo. Remember, no? um, when Magellan no, saw the Island of Summer and Dente, no, dun natin kasi that is the piece of St. Lazarus. So when he saw the uh, the ice, the island of Samoa again, he named it Islas de San Lazaro. Some writers and historians no, named the Philippines or claim no, yung name ng Philippines in, uh, uh, nickname ng Philippines sa ginagamit nila is Archipelago de Magallanes no, or Island of Magellan in honor to Ferdinand Magellan, Archipelago de Legaspi or Island of Miguel Lopez de Legaspi in honor to uh, Governor General Miguel Lopez de Legaspi, Islas del Poniente or West Archipelago, Islas de Orienta or East Archipelago, Islas de Misunes or Archipelago of Montero, Las Islas Pilipinas in honor to King Philip II of Spain. And to Paul Rizal, also give a name of the Philippines. No? The Philippines niya, ang sabi niya, or he called Philippines as the Pearl of the Orient. Okay? And right now, in our Philippine Constitution, the name of our county is none other than Philippines. Okay. So, the physical features of the Philippines. Of course, when we study a particular country, we need to, to, uh, to study its physical feature or geographical background. No? Why? Because geography or geographical features of a particular country uh, create a big role or have a big factor or role in molding the history of this nation. Okay? So, ways of determining the location of Philippines, actually, in geography, because we have two, only two, the absolute and relative location. So, relative location, we're divided, is divided into two. We have the location, no? When we say the location, determining location based on the neighboring countries, no? In the northern part, sabi natin, look at neighboring countries. So, for example, this is the map of the Philippines. Okay. For example, this is the map of the Philippines. Okay. Sabi chan, this is a location. We can determine the, part, the location of the Pacific or the location of, a, of the country, no? 
you can determine the location of a country based on the uh, based on the neighboring countries. For example, in the, in the situation of the Philippines, in the northern part we have, in the northern part we have, I want Okay. In the eastern part, no, we have the eastern part, then it is written here is the Guam. What else? In the western part, we have the next counting here is Vietnam. And in the southern part, we have Indonesia. So, in similar location, determining location based on the water parts and land parts that surround the county. Since this, the, the Philippines were surrounded only by water or water forms, no? Kaya, makikita lang natin din lahat ay uri ng tubig or yung mga uh, anyong tubig katubigan, okay? For example, in the northern part, we have the Basin Channel. In the southern part, we have the Celebe Sea. In the eastern part, we have Pacific Ocean. And in the west, we have the South China Sea or since we are claiming some part of the Sprati group of island, no, or Kalayan group of island, we rename South China Sea as West Philippine Sea. Okay. Another is the, what we call absolute location. When you say absolute location, determining location based on the degree of latitude and longitude. What is the exact location of the Philippines? It is 4 degree, 23 minute to 21 degree, 30 minute north latitude, and 116 degree to 127 degree is longitude. Facts. Do you know that Yami Island is the northernmost part of the Philippines? Yami Island is also known as the Mabudis Island. Okay, in part of the province of Batanes, that is the northernmost part of the Philippines. It is only 29 kilometers away from Taiwan or uh, about 30 miles uh, away from Taiwan. Okay, so Salwag Island is the southernmost part of the county or the Philippines where it is about 43 kilometers away from North Borneo. That is the southernmost part of the Philippines, Saluag Island. Okay. The location of the Philippines is important. Why? Because, number one, it is the first Christian nation in the non-Christian Asian world. No? Since uh, be uh, before, um, before Philippines is the only Christian nation in the non-Christian Asian world. Now we are the only nation in this part of the Asia. No? But right now we are the first Christian nation because dalawa na tayo in Asia in is lalo na sa Southeast Asia. Dalawa na tayo ang ana ang pangalawa ang sumunod sa atin ay ang bansang East Timor or Timor Leste. Okay? It is the melting pot of races and cultures with a unique heritage from Asia, Europe, Latin America, and North America. No? We can observe that. Why? Because very flexible to the mga Pilipino. The cultures and bukansa talaga, it's very easy for us to adapt it. No? Lalo na sa, lalo na ngayon, nauuso yung mga Koreans. No? Ay, lalo na ngayon, tinauuso naman ngayon yung tinatawag natin, mga, uh, mga uh, Thai movies naman. Okay? And of course, the reason yung, yung, yung culture talaga naman, mak makikita mo na in terms of food, no? sa tradition, talagang mapapansin mo, may pagkakapareho tayo with other countries or other parts of the world. Okay? It is the bridge that links the oriental and occidental world. No? Sabi nga dyan, no? tayo yung kaya nga nagiging problema rin namin yan kasi tayo yung nagiging bagsakan o daanan ng mga no mga masasamang loob in terms of drugs, human trafficking, no, that's sa ating dumadaan kasi sinasabi nga, very strategic ang location ng Pilipinas, no? Kaya nga, very, sasabi nga, it's very strategic, kaya nga yung mga Americans, yung, yung mga Americans, di ba? Kaya nga, hindi tayo mapitawa ng America. Why? It is because of the location of the Philippines. Okay? Bakit sila lahat ng bansa sa, ano, sa Asia, bakit ginagis sila or ginagil sila? Kailangan noon during the uh, time pa ni PGMB yung mag-aigo or before pa PGMB yung mga last president kasi sila magdain ng base militar sa Pilipinas. Na bakit ginagis sila or ginagigil sila? Because of the strategic location of the Philippines. Okay? Philippines, uh, the location of the Philippines is also important because it is the crossroad of Asia's air and sea roads. And in this, the Basian democracy in Asia, wherein most of the countries are kingdom, military dictatorship, or one party government. Okay.
1988. According to our 1987 Constitution, Article 1, which is the, state, the, uh, the statement of our national territory, you know, the national territory comprised the Philippine Archipelago, which was the islands and one of the were in, tapos sa, sa, sa ating uh, uh, Article 1, our national territory, lahat ng nasa hinpap, ibabaw ng hinpapawid, sa ibabaw ng lupa, sa ibabaw ng tubig, kailan din man ng lupa, kailan din man ng tubig, eh pag-ari ng Pilipinas. Okay. Yes, yes. Siguro na is nyo. Sir, wait ka, no? parang wala namang exact, ano, wala namang exact measure talaga kung wala, kung, kung, kung hagal saan yung lawak ng Pilipinas. Okay? Ito yung sinusunod natin na is to elimination of Philippine territory. Number one, the Three Miles Doctrine. Three Miles Doctrine is also known as the International Law of the Sea. All countries in the world, no, sinusunod talaga ito noon. Na I think now, alam ko meron pa sinusunod dito because it is the international law of the sea or the three months doctrine. So, magsusokas sila from their seashores, they will measure three months from their seashores. Ang kutagamit ito yung mga bansang mayroong uh, mga part ng katubigan or may mga, may mga part sila ng, ng tubig or water. Okay? So, magsusokas sila from their seashores ng three months, no? And kung ano man yung makuha nilang mga resources, kung ano man yung makuha nilang mga uh, maku makukuha nilang energy doon or pagkain o malilinang nilang mga energy doon na mga ng mga bagay doon, may karapatan sila. That is the international law of the sea. Okay. How about the 12 miles doctrine? 12 miles doctrine, no? sabi nga natin, pag 3 miles kasi when we apply the 3 miles doctrine in the Philippines, no? Alam, when we apply the 3 miles doctrine in the Philippines, 3 miles, 3 miles, 3 miles, what do you observe? What do you observe? Of course, hindi pa rin dugtong-dugtong yung ating mga Islands. Because yung islands sa Pilipinas, dahil nga we are archipelago or pulo-pulo, masyado malala yung agwat ng ating mga isla. That is why, no, nagkaroon ng tinatang natin archipelagic doctrine or that we are by its doctrine. The extent that every uh, archipelago or archipelagic uh, country, no, the extent that three miles, no, per 12 miles na pag-aampin ng territory sa mga uh, seashores. Okay. 12 months, 12 months. Okay. What happened in the Philippines? Hindi pa rin siya makukonek yung iba, lalo na yung Palawan, sobrang layo niyan. From mainland Luzon and Mindanao. That is why, no, sabi natin kung dapat ang tayo na tawag natin mga open sea. Okay. What are the disadvantages of having this what we call open seas? Correct? Siyempre, threat sa Pilipinas yan, no? Pwede, unang-una dyan, yung drug trafficking at yung pangalawa yung human trafficking. Yes, madali nang, it's very easy for them to access no, the country. Kung sa nagkaroon tayo ng internal waters within our vicinity. Okay? That is why sa United Nations, nagkaroon tayo ng, ng, ano, ng, pag, ng, ng pag-usap. Kaya naman, during the time of President Marcos, na push yung tinatawag natin through 100 miles doctrine o yung tinatawag natin or also known as the exclusive economic zone. So, as you can see on the Philippine map, no, you can see the Philippine map, may ganyan ang linya. No? Meaning to say, because we are using the one called exclusive economic zone, or the EEC, the 200 miles long. Facts, the Philippine claims 52 features in the exploratory group of Ireland. Among these, uh, among these, the Philippines was able to occupy only seven islands and two reefs. These are Pag-asa, Dikas, Parola, Dawa, Kota, Patag, Panata, Rizal, Balagtas, and Thomas or Ayumi Reef. Okay. Other features claimed by the Philippines are either occupied by Vietnam, China, Taiwan, or Malaysia, or unoccupied by any other countries. Part of the Sprati Island group that are not claimed by the Philippines are those that are near to Vietnam. The part is featured that is that it claims is Ladrib, which is nearer to and occupied by Vietnam. So, let's proceed to our, the regions of the Philippines. Do you, uh, do you know that Philippines were divided, was divided into how many regions? Oh, it's not 18. Okay, it's 17. Before, kasi sabi natin, it's 30 pa naging 18 na. Yes, but uh, President Duterte abolished that law or that bill na 
binalik niya, inabolish niya yung yung law na yan na pati-create ng Region 18 o yung tinitag natin Negros Island Region, no? He divided again the island the Negros uh, Island in two parts, the occidental uh, 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 occidental Negros Occidental or the western part went back to Region 6, no? And Region 7 naman itong uh, Negros Oriental, okay? In the Region 7. So I will show to you the Philippine map, no? And we will discuss about the regions of the Philippines. Of course, the capital region of the Philippines is North Africa, the national capital region. Okay. 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 As you can see, I have here the Philippine map, no? So we have the national capital region, okay? So we have here the national capital region in Luzon. We have, in the northern part of Luzon, we have the Cordillera Administrative Region, or DAR. Ito po so Apayao, Abra, Palinda, Mountain Province, Sipudaw, and also Benguet. This is the mountainous part of the what we call Luzon Island, okay, in the northern part. We also have Region 1 in the eastern part of the Philippines. No, it's composed of Los Norte, Los Sol, La Union, and Pan. That's in the western part of the Philippines. No, this is the Los Region or western part of Luzon Island. This is the Los Region or Region 1. We have Region 2, that is the eastern part of Luzon. We have Batanes, uh, in the north, you know, Batanes, Cagayan, Isabela, Pinino, Nebra, Eleva, this, Caga. Okay. So next one, we have region 2, uh, region 3, central Luzon, or the plain, you know, central plain of Luzon. We have, or it's composed of Aurora, Nebraxiha, Ablax, Ambales, Pampanga, Bulacan, and the province of Bataan. Okay. So, Region 4 was divided into two. So, we have Region 4A, 4A, and 4B. So, uh, for 4A, we have the Aquinian Calabar Zone. It is composed of the provinces of Luza, Laguna, Cavite, Batangas, and Quezon. And Region 4B, we have the Aquinian Mimaropa. It stands for Mimaropa. It stands for Mindoro Oriental, Mindoro Occidental, Marikuke, Romilon, and of course the province of Palawan. Okay. So we have here the what we call Region 5. Region 5 is also known as the Bicol Region or the Bicol Peninsula Region. No, we have this is the longest peninsula we have here in the Philippines. We got the peninsula region. We have the Marines Norte, the Marines Tour, the Tanguanes, Albay, Sonsogon, and the province of Mas Bate. We have the Western Visayas region or region 6. No, this is also known as the Panay Island region. Okay, we have this composed of Aplan, Capiz, Antique, Iloilo, Guimaras, and Negros Occidental. Okay, how about Region 7? Yes, also known as the Central Visayas region. This is just in the center of the Visayas. No? We have uh, Island, Island of Cebu, Bohol, Negros Oriental, and the island of, or the province of, City 4. We have Region 8 in the eastern portion of the Visayas, or also the eastern Visayas region. It is composed of Northern Samar, Samar, Eastern Samar, Biliran, Leyte, and Southern Leyte. Okay. We have Region 9, or known as the Sambuanga Peninsula region. No, in the southern, in, in the part of Mindanao, we have here the Sambuanga Peninsula region. It is composed of Sambuanga del Norte, del Sur, and Sambuanga Sea, Bukay. We have region 10, or northern Mindanao region. 
composed of composed of uh, North Cotabato, uh, composed of Isanas Occidental, Lago del Norte, Isanas Oriental, Bukit and the island of Kamigin. We also have the uh, Northern Mindanao or Region 9, uh, Davao Region or Region 11 rather, Davao Region or Region 11. We have, we, we do not have any Compostela Valley, Chinese and in into Davao de Oro. So we have Davao de Oro, Del Norte, Oriental, Del Sur, and Davao of Sea, Del Pai. So we also have the, what we call um, region, 12 or Soxa region region. We have North Cotabato, South Cotabato, Central Tugara, and the province of Sarangani. We have the Caraga region or region 13, composed of Surigao del Norte, Surigao del Sur, Abuja del Norte, and Abuja del Sur. And the group of Dinaga Islands. We have the barn or uh, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. We, you know, we have Tawi Tawi, Sulu, Basilan, Lalo del Norte, and the Lalo del Sur, and Mag Province of Magin, Mindanao. So these are the so these are the provinces or 81 provinces of the Philippines. Again, Philippines was divided, is divided into 17 regions and we have 81 provinces. Okay. So, so guys, I hope you got something today. So, see you for the next uh, chapter, uh, videos for our next topic. Thank you. Bye-bye.